is weird, odd, strange, or just plain bizarre is really your cup of tea. Then, the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast will give you that fix. Can't believe it? Well, listen for yourself as we deliver the strangest news you definitely won't find on CNN or Fox. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Weird News Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Emily Ferrier, here to bring you some of my favorite weird news stories of the past few days. All right, here we go. Um, top story today, April Fool's is canceled because we can't distance fact from fiction. April Fool's Day has been effectively canceled this year uh, because we are media literate and don't fully understand the coronavirus. Um, So the coronavirus is canceled April Fool's Day. Countless businesses and websites have decided to forego pranks uh, this year. Meanwhile, a handful of countries have even outlawed jokes related to coronavirus. Such steps are arguably justified, seeing as how we're living in a time of unprecedented panic and hysteria. However, canceling April Fool's is a sad indictment of how society, in an age of mass digital media, has lost the ability to separate fact and fiction. It's also an alarming indication of how little we know uh, for certain about coronavirus. Uh, A number of countries are threatening prosecution or fines for coronavirus-related pranks. In Thailand, COVID-19-themed jokes could bring you a jail sentence of up to five years. In Taiwan, you could receive a $100,000 fine. And in India, states have threatened to take legal action against April Fool's pranksters. At the same time, countries such as Germany have urged their citizens not to engage in any coronavirus pranks. And it's not only governments. Businesses such as Heinz and Lego have announced that they won't be doing anything for April Fool's this year. Even Google won't be making any of its famed April Fool's announcements. Basically, Fear of spreading misinformation about the coronavirus has canceled April Fool's Day. And it seems like most people on the web agree with canceling the annual custom. Uh, Given that the WHO, UNICEF, and various governments have warned about the rampant coronavirus misinformation, such a step is definitely justified. We need better media literacy. Indeed, misleading posts have circulated widely on social media, claiming the likes of garlic, silver, and chlorine dioxide uh, help fight the coronavirus. Such claims are all untrue. Not only that, but they could put people's lives at risk. Still, while the cancellation of April Fool's Day is perhaps necessary this kind of year, it is a sad reflection on the state of society and mass communication. It indicates that we've lost the ability to separate fact from fiction. In an age of social and distance digital media, too many of us can no longer assess whether a claim is likely to be true or false. We can't check the source of claims. We can't even evaluate whether a source is likely to be biased or interested. And we can't even check whether our other reputable sources are saying the same thing. And that's why we had to cancel April Fool's Day. Because on seeing a sensational claim about the virus, too many of us 
would have accepted it without a second thought. And then we would have spread it just like the virus. Although the cancellation of April Fool's Day indicates something important and scary about the coronavirus pandemic, that is, we still don't know enough about COVID-19. Even trusted scientists and organizations don't understand it fully. What what well-established facts we have about the virus are minimal. Meanwhile, everything else remains provisional, uncertain, and sometimes confused. That's why information, misinformation, has been able to thrive during this pandemic, because there's a vacuum. So the cancellation of April Fool's Day isn't just about our digital literacy. It's about our failure to get a grip on the coronavirus. Uh, So, with that said, let's go on to a silly story, shall we? A cyclist was airlifted to the hospital after crashing while racing money, raising money for the rescue helicopters. Yeah. A charity rider has learned firsthand the value of rescue helicopters while he was attempting to raise money for them. Uh, Cyclist Rob Meadows needed the help of a rescue helicopter when he and five friends were cycling the length of the country to raise funds for North End Emergency Services Trust. Uh, Meadows went flying over the handlebars and his front wheel hit a pothole in uh, Pereira Forest near Taupo with a broken collarbone and broken ribs. He needed the assistance of Taupo Greenlay Rescue Helicopter to get to Waikato Hospital. Uh, The accident proved the value of New Zealand's rescue helicopters, Meadow said. You never know when you're going to need a rescue chopper service, be that in Northland or, as I found out, anywhere else in the country. Topo's rescue helicopter Greenlay came under threat in 2018 when the Ministry of Health wanted to dissolve regional helicopters based in Topo, Rotora, and Tianu. A protest of more than a 1,000 people helped secure the service. Meadows said that he had a new appreciation for the rescue service. His friends managed to make it to Bluff, raising $5,651 through Give a Little through North End Rescue Helicopters. The rest of my team completed the trip in just 23 days. And on behalf of them... I want to thank everyone who donated. Thank you. The team was riding as a part of Tour Eordira, a 3,000-kilometer cycle down the length of the country. This particular group left Cape Rianya on February 17th, and Meadows had his accident on day seven of the trip. After a couple of days in the hospital, he's now recovering at home, using apps to continue virtual races. Meadows said that the tour was so much fun, he would be he was disappointed when the accident ruined his adventure, and he hopes to take part in the next event in 2022. Again, raising money for the Northland Service Helicopters. Um, so, that um, was a little fun story to take the edge off of uh, the little serious one that I started, well, kind of serious one that I started with. Kind of silly that, you know, we had to, we're at this day and age, but I absolutely agree we had to cancel it. We could, you know, do uh proper pranks right now um it's not really the time is it time and place it's like your cousin that doesn't realize he's being inappropriate at the dinner table with grandma right that's kind of the equivalent of it um and these stories are going to get more and more ridiculous and uh they're not fake so stay tuned for those uh we have one coming up uh about the pentagon um and it's going to sound fake but it's not so stay tuned for that Uh, This story from CNN about the Pentagon and their resources. 
So don't go anywhere. Talk to you after the break. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back. Uh, so when we left off, we were um, talking about how we had to, you know, cancel April Fool's Day. And then a man that was raising funds for a helicopter um, ended up getting airlifted by a helicopter. Anyway, now this. The Pentagon says it still hasn't sent ventilators because it hasn't been told where to send them. In Washington, CNN says... Despite having committed to transferring 2,000 ventilators and military stocks to the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the Department of Health and Human Services to fight the coronavirus outbreak, the Pentagon has not shipped any of them because the agencies have not asked them for a provided shipping location, the Pentagon's top logistics official said on Tuesday in order to ship the badly needed equipment to the defense uh, department has to be given a location to send them by civilian authorities who have to decide where the items are most needed. There was a decision with HHS on where to send them. They said, hey, wait, we're trying to look at the demand that's required. And so we were asked just to wait while there was some sorting through that. And I won't speak on behalf of them, but we're in a position to provide 2,000, said Lieutenant General Giovanni Tuck. Tuck said that he had no details on the HHS decisions, but added that we haven't provided any because of last, uh, because as of last night, we weren't, we were asked to just hold on to the ones that we have and then we will push them when they're ready for them. He emphasized that there are a thousand ventilators fully ready to be shipped as the Pentagon gets the destination of where to ship them, and the other thousand can be assembled and shipped within days of getting the order indicated. The uncertainty comes as health experts continue to say that there is serious need for more respirators and ventilators to deal with the surge of uh, coronavirus patients at hospitals across the country. Medical professionals have also asked for help related to testing for the virus, but several days after Pentagon officials ordered the assistant to the area, it remains unclear if they've begun to do so. Civilian Pentagon officials have repeatedly said that they are making ventilators and 5 million uh, N95 respirator masks available. So far, only 1.5 million masks have been shipped by the Pentagon. Another 50,000 are waiting to be shipped within days. But HHS and FEMA have given DOD no indication of when or where they precisely want the other 3 million items to go. An HHS official told CNN that Many of the DOD ventilators are deployable ventilators and require special tracking while the ventilators in the HHS strategic national stockpile are the types of ventilators commonly used by the U.S. hospitals and are better suited for immediate use. The same official pointed out that other ventilators have been deployed with military deployments 
like those aboard Navy hospital ships in California and New York, who are treating non-COVID-19 patients. FEMA spokeswoman Lizzie Liz- Litzow did not comment on the fact that the Pentagon's ventilators have not been deployed, but said that the government is working to ensure ventilators are shipped to the states in the amount needed to manage the immediate crisis. In the case of ventilators, immediate is defined as requirements necessary to sustain life within a 72-hour window. So that's what we're working with right now, a 72-hour window. On March the 17th, Defense Secretary Mark Epser told reporters at a briefing that the department is prepared to distribute 2,000 ventilators as needed. We're prepared to distribute to HHS up to 2,000 deployable ventilators as needed. These machines are different from the civilian equivalents and require special training to operate, but we are committed to supporting the requirements any way we can, he said at that time. The department has made are 14 certified coronavirus testing labs available to test non-DOD personnel as well, and we will soon be able to offer two additional labs for that purpose. We hope this will provide excess capacity to civilian population. Esper added, During the briefing, Esper acknowledged that when you look at the number of people that are projected that will need ventilators, 2,000 doesn't put much of a dent into it but we can offer what we have. Uh, it's unclear if the, um, uh, sorry, additionally, it remains unclear if the Pentagon has tested any civilian patients for the virus more than two weeks after Esper said he'd offered to do so. We're not maxing our capacity in the labs around the world. Joint Staff Surgeon um, Paul Friedrich said in a Pentagon press conference last week, adding that the Defense Department is currently operating 16 labs capable of conducting a test. We have not received an RFA request for assistance from HHS that I'm aware of, he said, but we do have a capacity in some of our labs. We've identified that to HHS several hours after the Pentagon said it's not received request for assisting with testing. HHS has submitted for initial request to assist DOD, and both departments are in the process of assessing capabilities to partner in testing. CNN has reached out to the Pentagon for an update, but has not yet received a response. Meanwhile, the military continues to grapple with an increasing amount of positive cases within its ranks. As of Tuesday morning, 716 U.S. service members had tested positive, and the first military death related to COVID was announced on Monday. Uh, beyond its spread within the armed forces, top U.S. commanders around the globe have previously expressed concerns that allies shut the borders, uh, but that as allies shut down borders and travel, there's a risk that military readiness may start degrading, according to several defense officials. Still, the Department of Defense stressed its new release Monday that it has adopted dramatic mitigation measures to protect service members, civilian employees, contractors, and their families during this virus. These include mandating social distancing, termination of certain work and training activities, and providing testing and care for our community members. Uh, That seems to be a common theme throughout this is indecision and um, uh, lack of proper communication. Um, There seems to be a couple of crossed wires that are kind of preventing uh, certain things to get ahead. So um, hopefully they can sort that as soon as possible as these ventilators are necessary for sustaining the lives of these patients right now. So um, pretty crazy stuff, isn't it? And on a uh, another note, I was going to say a lighter note, but not quite. On a lighter note, we're going to talk about 
drinking, but we re- return from the break. Uh, it's not quite lighter, but um, some crazy stuff, crazy data about drinking when we return from the break. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Welcome back. Um, when we left off, we were talking about the Pentagon uh, not having any direction of where to ship new ventilators. Yep. And now, um, and I mean, this is a direct response to this, essentially. Americans are drinking a crazy amount of alcohol during the coronavirus lockdown. Um. Americans are concocting cocktails to cope with the coronavirus in lots of them. U.S. sales of alcoholic beverages have risen 55% in the week ending March 21st, according to Nielsen data. Hard alcohol, such as gin, tequila, and pre-mixed cocktails in the top of the poor list, and spirits have seen the highest increase with sales jumping 75% compared to the same period last year. Wine and beer are heavily flowing as well. Wine sales up by 66 and beer sales by 42%. Uh, In New York, liquor stores are considered essential business by Governor Andrew Cuomo and remain open, but even so, national online sales were up 243%, far outpacing store sales. Uh, Daniel Colesmo, a Nelson vice president, suspects growth rates peaked that week as stay-at-home orders went into effect, prompting many to stock up on booze. She said the data for the week ending March 28th will be a better indicator of ongoing demand. Uh, As consumers are largely... um, As consumers largely avoid, sorry, brick and mortar shops, many of which are closed, online service apps have made it easier for lushes have to, uh, to toast friends during the happy hours via Zoom, Facebook, uh, FaceTime, Google Hangouts, etc. Alcohol delivery app Drizzly, which serves 26 states plus Washington, D.C., and Alberta, uh, says that COVID 19 pandemic had an impact on sales this week, um, approximately 300% from earlier in the year. The world might be mad for margaritas, but World Health Organization wants people to put the brakes on the booze, calling it an unhelpful coping strategy. The rise in alcohol consumption has also negatively impacted those who are alcohol and drug recovery which health experts say that they've already seen an increase in relapse. Dr. Richard Piper of charity Alcohol Change UK says the independent that drinkers should limit their consumption to 14 units or less per week. With routines out the window, we might well find ourselves reaching for a drink more often, he said. I would say so. Uh, Personally, I would, yeah, I would say so. I... I have to admit that I did buy a lot more wine than usual and have been uh, drinking said wine. And, um, yeah, it's a coping strategy for some. Or for some, it's just, um, you know, you'd normally be, be buying a drink with dinner or getting a glass of wine when you're at dinner out and uh, having to do it inside. You're kind of like, okay, well, I guess... 
you know, I'll, um, I'll just, you know, just, just get a box of wine, um, if you're me. Uh, it's understandable. You know, it's definitely understandable that that's, that's, uh, a, a lot of, you know, Americans are kind of reaching to the booze for their, uh, their coping mechanisms. But, uh, there's a lot of other things to do out there. Guys, there's virtual museums. You know? There's, um, lots of apps, which are fun. Uh, and, I mean, there's a whole lot going on, you know, there's a lot. So, you know, cope with other things. Anyway, Kentucky judges have started imposing a form of house arrest on stubborn coronavirus patients who break their self-isolation orders in an effort to stop them from spreading the disease. Uh, Circuit judges have ordered two coronavirus patients and one patient relative to wear ankle monitors in Louisville, uh, Kentucky, um, after they broke quarantine orders, the Louisville Courier Journal reports. First order was handed down after a patient broke self-quarantine to go shopping on March the 21st. Uh, Public health officials can ask for a person to be isolated for coronavirus under state law. And it's up to circuit judge to approve or deny the affected individuals not charged with a crime. Judge Charles Cunningham ordered two relatives to wear ankle monitors on March the 27th after one tested positive for the disease and both refused to stay indoors. Monitors are being used to ensure that law enforcement can keep people from spreading the virus. It's something we're all feeling all the way through, Cunningham told the Courier Journal. We're trying to figure out how this should be done. Local officials say that they desperately need people to follow the rules for the greater good, especially after multiple police and firefighters were diagnosed with the novel coronavirus. Louisville Mayor Greg Fisher says the region is grappling with more than 200 cases of the virus and he needs people to take it seriously and practice social distancing. The more we all stay at home, the safer we're going to be, Fisher said on Tuesday, according to Wave 3 News. We prefer not to have to do this. Uh, However, Hess says house arrest approach is well suited to enforcing social distancing when necessary. We can monitor activity to make sure that they're not further affecting the community. Kentucky is one of many jurisdictions in the United States where the coronavirus has triggered a tug of war between individual freedom and the greater public good. In Florida and Louisiana, for example, a handful of megachurch leaders have refused to call off massive religious gathering despite fears of it spreading like wildfire throughout the cozy plaque congregation. Um, health officials around the world have recommended a large gatherings and staying away from those and to help this slow. Uh, they've also pointed out that self-isolation is not about protecting patients with the virus. It's about protecting others from getting sick and not dying from coming into contact with an infected person. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's just, it's just about not being selfish, really. Um, yeah, stop being selfish, guys. Stop going outside. Or, you know, government's going to put an ankle bracelet on you. Yeah, that's what happens in a national emergency. Rights revoked. Not entirely, but, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm cool with it. You know, we got to keep everybody safe. Uh, when we come back from the break, outlawing uh, nagging, possibly. We will uh, talk about that when we return. So you gotta, you got to tune back in after the break to find out what that's all about. Yeah, keeping you on the edge. So stay with us. 
Check out the show built around the women of MMA from the UFC, Invicta FC, Bellator, and one championship. We got the fights covered. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts, past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Hey guys, what's up? How you doing? Welcome back. For the break, we were talking about mm, getting uh, house arrest via anklets. And now, the Malaysian government apologizes after uh, advising wives to avoid nagging during coronavirus lockdown. The Malaysian government was forced to apologize after its Women's Development Department published a series of sexist tips to help deal with ongoing coronavirus lockdown, including advising women to continue to wear makeup and to avoid nagging. The campaign was met with a fierce backlash online, and the posts have since been deleted from the department's social media account. As of Thursday afternoon in Malaysia, More than 2,900 coronavirus cases have been confirmed inside the country, killing 45 people, according to a tally by John Hopkins University. Prime Minister Tan Sri Mayadin Yassin enacted a series of far-reaching measures last month intended to stem infections of COVID-19, Uh, including a strict nationwide controls locking down all travel uh, in or out of the country and heavily restricting movement within the country itself. One of the biggest criticisms against the government body is charged with supporting women uh, appeared to be that it was ignoring concerns about the rise in domestic violence that may accompany stay-at-home orders instead of focusing on things like, and and instead, sorry, focusing on things like how women should dress. The Malaysian All Women's Action Society called the Women's Development Department uh, to, called on, sorry, the Women's uh, Development Department to stop its sexist messaging and to focus on helping domestic violence survivors. Women's Development Department Director General Hakima Hassan said the aim was actually to set out positive messages, according to the state-run news agency uh, Bernama. The approach used was to share methods and practices uh, to maintain positive relationships with the family during the phase of working from home. We've taken note of the numerous comments on some tips for women, which were promoted through uh, posters via our social media account. The Malaysian government and its leaders have faced accusations of sexism and misogyny on multiple occasions in recent years during a debate on amending domestic violence in 2017. A member of parliament said husbands were abused when their wives threw insults, withheld sex, and denied consent for Muslims to take another wife. Uh, That's just too much to unpack, I think. Dress however you want. Be however you want in your isolation. It's your isolation. You know? What's not okay is violence. I don't don't think that any of that needed to be said. Anyway. In other news, in what 
sounds like it could be an April Fool's joke. The Venezuelan Navy offshore patrol vessel recently sank after ramming a cruise liner in the Caribbean Sea. The cruise ship, which had no passengers on board at the time, has a reinforced hull to sail through the ice-filled waters. Uh, suffered only minimal damage in what the operating company Columbia Cruise Services is called an act of aggression in international waters. The incident occurred in the early hours of March 30th, but the Columbia Cruise Service only re released an official statement on April 1st. The company which is headquartered in Germany, said the RCGS Resolute was drifting just over 13 miles off the coast of the Isla La Torga, Tortuga, and uh, a Venezuelan island situated some 60 miles off the country's northern coast um, when the ANBV Naigueta, also known by its number GC23, approached it. The Venezuelan Navy ship ordered that the cruise ship uh, ordered the cruise ship sorry to follow it to Puerto Rico, Puerto Mor Moriano, on Isla de Margarita, located to the east, accusing it of violating the country's territorial waters. When the event occurred, the cruise vessel. Resolute had already been drifting for one day off the coast of the island to conduct some routine engine maintenance on its idle voyage to its destination. The statement from Columbia Cruise says, Shortly after midnight, the cruise vessel was approached by an armed Venezuelan Navy vessel, which uh, via radio questioned the intentions of the Resolute's presence. The 403-foot-long Resolute, which, flagged, uh, which is flagged in Portugal, reportedly had a gross tonnage of around 8,445 tons at the time. The ship was laid down in September 1990 and completed in June 91, intended for Antarctic cruises and reinforced ice-capable ice hull. Uh, the Nerguita, which is just over 262 feet long, is um, an offshore patrol vessel and displaces around 1,720 tons with a full load. Uh, this is the third ship of the class entered into service in 2011. Spanish shipbuilder Navinta designed and built uh, these ships and has been working on a fourth one, uh, which translates to Eternal Commander Hugo Chavez. The shipbuilding from halted work on his last ship was named after the late Venezuelan leader Hugo Chavez after Venezuela uh, descended into a major and still ongoing political crisis to January 2019. Um, while the master was in contact with the head office, Gunshots were fired, and shortly thereafter, the Navy vessel approached the starboard side at speed with an angle of 135 degrees uh, and purposefully collided with the Resolute. In a statement continued, the Navy vessel continued to ram the starboard bow in an attempt to turn the ship's head towards Venezuelan territorial waters. Columbia Cruise Services does not say what kind of gun was fired, and it didn't do any damage. Um, the main gun and turret forward of the main superstructure, as well as a pair of 20 millimeter cannons and two uh, 0.5 caliber machine guns. The crew would also have various small arms themselves. Um, whatever the case, the uh, oh, we have to okay, we have to take a break. But I want to continue with the story afterwards because it's kind of crazy, and it sounds like an April Fool's joke. Like it sounds fake. It's not. This is true. This really happened. Um, so we are going to come back uh, and finish this story off when we return. And then we will move on to our next story. So definitely don't go anywhere to reach the end of this story. 
Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. All right. We were talking about a Venezuelan uh, ship that had rammed a cruise ship and uh, apparently fired guns at it, uh, although the ship did not receive any damage. Anyway, um, from the it didn't receive any damage from the gunshots, so they were they weren't quite like able to confirm the gunshots. Anyway, whatever the case, steel hulled patrol ship suffered severe damage from repeatedly ramming the cruise ship, uh, began to take on water, and ultimately sank. Columbia Cruise Services said the Resolute remained in the area until it was clear uh, its services were not required to help the rescue of the 44 members. It then continued on as planned to the port of Willemstead in Curaco. This is... um. One set of events, as described, but Venezuelan authorities have disputed this version of events, claiming the Resolute, in a cowardly and criminal manner, fled the collision site and didn't try to rescue the crew of the sinking ship. Venezuelan Minister of Defense Vladimir Pedrino said uh, he described the cruise ship's actions as an act of imperial aggression and piracy. The exact circumstances that led to the incident remained murky. Uh, If the Resolute was drifting as the crew performed work on board, it may well have found its way into Venezuelan national waters, as the country's authorities allege. Um, allege, Sorry, Uh, It's hard to see how an inadvertent crossing of the boundary would have been enough uh, to cause a board and seas ship under established norms. Even if the cruise liner had deliberately slain, sailed, I cannot read today, uh, within 12 miles of uh, the Isla de Tortuga, it's likely that it would have been legally entitled to do so under the right of innocent passage, unless Venezuelan officials believe the ship to be conducting some sort of prohibited activity. course, this would not be the first time that the country has seized or attempted to seize a commercial ship uh, to exert its own pressure on international opponents. Iran infamously took control of a British-flagged oil tanker in July of 2019, uh, in part in an effort to get the United Kingdom to release an Iranian supertanker that it had impounded. Venezuela's dictatorial current president, Nicolas Maduro, has been uh, locked in major political disputes with opposition groups since January 2019. The country had been in grips of a serious economic crisis for years. However, Maduro remains in power despite international pressure, especially from the United States, pushing him to leave office and to allow for transition into a new government. On March the 26th, the U.S. Department of Justice unsealed Indictment, indictments uh, against the Venezuelan president, as well as 13 other official charges. The U.S. State Department subsequently announced that $15 million, a $15 million reward for information leading to the arrest or conviction of Maduro. The incident involving the Resolute may be linked to Portugal, where the Resolute is flagged. The government, which is uh, in the midst of its own set of disputes with Venezuela, despite acknowledging that Maduro is the de facto head of state, um, 
the Iberian country has recognized its principal opponent of Juan Guido as the country's legitimate leader. Not the only country to do that. In February 2020, Venezuela accused Guido, along with his uncle, of flying from Portugal uh, on that country's flag carrier, TAP, while carrying explosives in their luggage. It later accused TAP of conspiring with both men into smuggling explosives into Venezuela. Portuguese Foreign Minister Augusto Santos Silvia responded to these allegations by saying they made no sense. Uh, this whole story is just fascinating to me. I'm sorry if it's not as fascinating to you, but I was floored by this. Venezuela responded uh, by bar- uh, barring TAP from flying into Venezuela for 90 days. It also accuses Portuguese banks of holding large parts of Venezuelan stolen money, referring to frozen assets belonging to the Venezuelan government. This crisis has become somewhat moot as the COVID-19 pandemic has swept across the world, including Portugal and Venezuela, which has led to a massive drop in global air travel. Regardless of the exact circumstances, the Venezuelan Navy attempt to seize the cruise ship has certainly backfired in the immediate term. Resolute is safely in port and the country has now lost a third of its uh, class patrol ship fleet. Crazy stuff. Um, An army ship attacked a cruise ship and then the army ship sank. Bananas. That was the gist of that story, but you know, I wanted to hear an hour long podcast, didn't it? So, there you go. Anyway, um, here we go. Uh, this story, oh no, we don't need to get into that story yet. So, a lot of crazy stuff happening. The world is getting weird. Um, this is just a little quick one. Uh, the Netflix sensation Tiger King, I'm sure you've all heard of it, explores an at-length conspiracy theory that animal rights activist Carol Baskin murdered her missing husband, uh, multi-million millionaire Don Lewis. The conspiracy has captivated not only viewers, but O.J. Simpson, ironically, who's convinced that Carol fed her husband to the tigers. Um, he said on Twitter that he had not a shred of doubt that Carol was responsible for killing the man. Um, so, uh, if you don't know who O.J. Simpson is, uh, what? What? You know? Come on. Just come on. Anyway, so O.J. Simpson, um, who, here you go. If, I, I mean, I guess I got to say this. If you don't know, was sensationally acquitted of the brutal murders of Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman, had just finished a round of golf when he decided to share his thoughts on the series. Yesterday I watched the show and I thought, oh God, is America in this bad shape? He asked. I watched about six episodes of the show and I couldn't believe what I was looking at. White people, what's with you and your wild animals? Leave them alone. This show is crazy, but it's so crazy you keep watching. One thing I will say, it's not a shred of doubt in my mind that that lady's husband... Is Tiger Sashimi right now? I'm just saying, he said. And then he said, if I did it, here's what I would have done. I would have put him in the well. Because, um, you know, that was his, um, his um, thing. His book. Okay. Uh, uh, I think that's that's all I wanted to say on that. So when we come back, we're going to do our final section uh, talking about uh, finances. Look, it's a weird time. We're going to talk about finances, eh? Sick. Um, yeah, so stay tuned for that. Because um, it's going to be thrilling. So don't you leave. All right. 
the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. All right, welcome back, you cool cats and kittens. How many podcasts have you listened to that started that way? Seriously, you can be honest with me. I'm not not hurt. I don't feel it was an original. That was, that was you know what? That was cheap. That was cheap of me. I'm sorry to have failed you in such a way. All right, should we get back to it? Before the break, we were talking about uh, O.J. Simpson who um, suggested that Carol Baskin of Tiger King definitely killed her husband. He would know. Uh, Anyway, now, U.S. jobless claims hit 6.6 million as coronavirus layoffs continue. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped as much as 167.81 points or uh, 0.8% at the open after the feds revealed more than 6.6 million people filed initial job loss claims last week. Um, Hands up if you lost your job. This guy, high five. Um, Not stoked about it. Desperately looking for jobs. Did you know it's not a great market right now? Anyway, the blue chip index briefly climbed into the green, but was off 155.47 points, or 0.7%. As of 9.45 a.m. The S&P 500 and NASDAQ composite of each fell as much as 0.6% in early trading as investors wrestled with the record-breaking number. Features for all three indexes had pointed to opening gains before the U.S. Department of Labor released its weekly report an hour before the opening bell. Risk aversion will likely be the theme of the day, as today's jobless claims data highlights how fast American households are getting hit. Ed Moya, senior market analyst um, at OANDA, wrote in his commentary, Investors managed to shake off that record-shattering 3.3 million unemployment um, Claims reported last Thursday as hopes for a stimulus package to address the coronavirus pandemic spurred a rally on Wall Street. But the latest number more than doubled that total and blew past some of the pessimistic, or most of the pessimistic estimates. Goldman Sachs expected 6 million job loss claims last full week of March. While economists and Reuters survey predicted 3.5 million. Uh-oh. While extremely, while extreme validity, uh, violity, uh, volatility, thank you, is probably in our review mirror. We must now contend with worse than expected data, which, um, Put a downward pressure on stock prices, said Andrew Smith, Chief Chief Investigate Investment Officer at Dallas Capital Advisors. Patience, he says, is the name of the game. Um Well Uh yeah. That's happening. Is it? I mean, it's weird news because it's uh, like an unprecedented amount of job losses in in, um, in a matter of weeks. 
Um, and let's just end on a sillier note. So two married men in Kenya who are cattle traders by profession have fought to the death after slashing each other over a woman. No, this is also not an April Fool's story. This was published today on the 2nd. The men are reported to have fought at um, Alajori in Gilgil sub-county of Kenya, leaving viewers in shock as they attacked each other. One had his neck completely severed and died on the spot, and the other died after arriving at a nearby health center. Speaking out about the incident, uh, Jiljil sub-county commissioner uh, said the police are investigating the matter. He noted the woman in question was being sought. After a witness identified as Abel Kiprokin uh, disclosed that the two men had been cohabiting with the same woman, a mother of three for the last two years without knowing. Both men who are married uh, did not know each other until Wednesday morning when one of them found the other having breakfast in the woman's house. This uh, is coming after an earlier report of a butcher who escaped death by using free meat and uh, credit facilities to lure his female clients into um, bed. He ran out of luck when he fell uh, into a trap set by the husband, one of the women that he's been fooling around with. The unidentified husband, upon receiving a tip from a neighbor, the 32-year-old butcher, properly known uh, by his name as Akwai Tita, with his wife returned unannounced. The husband found his wife, Tita, in a compromising situation and went after the butcher using a rubber whip. The butcher narrowly escaped as the husband tried to reach for a more lethal weapon in the house. The offended husband, offended husband was has, however, uh, vowed to institute a lawsuit to ensure that Akwe Tita is kicked out of the dusty township for fooling around with people's wives. Those are real headlines. Those are real stories. Those are real things that happened. Isn't that bonkers? The world's getting weird, guys. Isn't it? Anyway, I just wanted to remind you how weird the word it, world is. Oh, my gosh. Guys, I am having, I'm having uh, trouble speaking. Anyway, I hope you guys are all staying safe during this. I hope you're all washing your hands and uh, staying away from human beings. And, um, you know, uh, just adhere to these rules. They are working. They're starting to work. So if you keep doing them, then they will work. And then the more you isolate now, the quicker everyone can get back to, um, to life and, uh, the sooner people will start to be able to heal and healthcare workers will be able to take care of the people that are sick right now. Okay. So thank you for listening to the weird news podcast brought to you by the GSMC podcast network. I'd like to ask that you please remember to subscribe to the show and to write a nice review, and to rate the episode. It really helps us get to, uh, get to get more listeners. Also, please follow us on uh, social media. So that's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Wash your hands. Stay away from people. Uh, eat some vegetables. Have a good night. Stay safe. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com.
download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.